Well, first, thank you for having me, and I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Um, this presentation is going to be, I mean, it's meant for all of us to live with more questions than answers. And um, if you have, if you want to stop me in the middle for me to clarify any term, just let me know. So by now, most of you might or not be familiarized with what circular economy and bioeconomy is, uh, but I think that we all know what deep tech is in general, right? Um, so I think I will start asking a question, uh, how much of circular economy by economy are you familiarized with? Have you heard about this before? No? Okay. If we go to the, to the next slide, please. Okay. So in terms of circular economy, is this concept about making less waste or producing less waste, using less raw materials and um, get uh, fewer emissions to the atmosphere. So we are going to start our process with obtaining the raw materials, right? Whatever it is that we need to create our technology. We're going to think about the design. We're going to think about the production, the distribution, the consumption. Then once that product, right, um, the user is done with using it, um, the people is going to expose this product and we need to to think about that waste management. But circular economy wants um, everyone to do is to um, not rely that much on raw materials but on reusing, recycling and repurposing the waste that we are generating in all our production process. Starting by thinking by, with a sustainable design then uh, thinking about um, less uh, contaminated ways of production and also including in our um, like sale plan or marketing plan the idea about asking people to take back the product to us once they are done using it. So I think that the most um, common example that we can think about that is about a plastic bottle. So we get the plastic bottle, right? We could, we obtain the plastic with um, from petrol and stuff like that, from oil. Uh, we we take the plastic bottle, we put any liquid that we need in there, and then the person is done using on a third. Most likely nowadays is going to recycle the bottle. But then it is up to me as a producer whether I want to use that recycle. Uh, plastic or not because we have a lot of different companies that are dedicated to recycle or to recycling um, but the bigger producers in for example like the drink industry are not necessarily working with them but it's my um, responsibility or my duty as um, a project management as a CEO as um, a factory manager whatever to be sure that I'm going to include the recycled um, plastic within my production cycle so that nothing is going to waste and everything is going to go in a circular base. Then when we talk about that and um, we talk about bioeconomy, so bioeconomy is just based on the use of na national resources within production cycles. So it's using biomaterials, materials that are uh, produced from maybe uh, yeast or amidon or all of these things that uh, plants produce in general. Maybe we'll have like a plant-based, uh, cardboard plant-based, uh, plastic plant-based, grab a plant-based, um, um, maybe any other like metal-like material and stuff like that. So then instead of, again, trying to instead of, of, of using raw aluminium and um, raw any other uh, metal we are going to uh, change that to this biomaterial that might uh, be uh, more environmental friendly. When it comes in terms to bioeconomy and then thinking about circular economy is the same thing. So when we think about how to put this into um, like a simple example to understand. Let's think about I don't know, the production of pineapples, for example. So I get the land and I plant the pineapple, and then uh, I waste. Um, I mean, I wait uh, for it to be um, harvested, and then I get the pineapple. I save the pineapple. I get my money. But now I have tons and tons of residues, agricultural residues that I'm just gonna take and throw away in an open uh, field waste bank. 
Why? Because until like maybe five or to 10 years ago, no one was thinking about what to do with that pineapple waste. So if you think about the pineapple, we have the yellow part and then the green part, right? But the green top of the pineapple is, um, it's not just what we see. Actually, that can be like 10 times bigger to the pineapple itself. All of that goes to waste. But now people are using biotechnology on their bioeconomy and circular economy basis to take this waste and turn that into biofuel, or again, turn that into a bioplastic or turn it into a biograph and many other things. If we go to the next slide, and we think about what deep tech has to do with this. So again, we understand that deep tech is mainly about artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, these type of platforms uh, with virtual reality, um, talking about biotechnology, big data, blockchain, and biotech too, so that everything is going to be um, what people mainly say about this is that we're thinking about science fiction become reality. And that's what we're doing right now. Right. So, for example, these type of platforms that can help people uh, or medicine students, engineers, um, also some astronomers and many other people in the science field to um, simulate different environments of a surgery, of uh, plant collection, or even understand how the uh, DNA is going to behave if you modify it or stuff like that through these type of AI and uh, ML environments, we can get a, um, a simple understanding and a faster understanding that rather to wait or have to use animals and a lot of, of different chemicals and materials in between, right? If we go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, with all of that, so now that we think about um, what we, what I explained about what circular economy is and what bioeconomy is and how and what deep tech is mainly about, we need to think about how sustainable my research and my project is. If, in terms of circular economy and, and bioeconomy, when it comes to technology, for example, we think about how um, many years the new computer that you bought is going to last how much um, raw material was used in the, in the production of that computer, how many parts of that computer are 100% new, and how many parts of that were repurposed or um, remanufactured from an old computer that the company collected and decided that is going to, um, maybe the keyboards were still okay, so we're gonna repurpose them, we just need to paint them again, but we still can use them. Or maybe the some of the, screen was still okay, like a couple of lights okay, it's better to do that rather to fabricate a new or manufacture a new um, screen from scratch. So what we think about is um, how to reduce raw materials, again, um, how to not uh, produce under a plant obsolescence um, focus, how to reduce environmental impact and how can I improve the, the longevity of my products? How can I make them last longer? And also in terms of understanding that maybe, let's think about the computer again, I will have to change the screen at one point. How can I keep the uh, case of the computer but only change the screen? without asking my customer to go and buy a full new computer just because the person needed to change the screen. I know that we think that now we can still do like a screen replacement. We can always send our phone to the factories for that to be um, to be fixed if we broke the screen or maybe the camera or the microphone is not working, that is always fixable. But nowadays, if we think about like big, big, big companies, for example, the one that has an apple in it, right? Um, they're not really focusing on how to make their products lo lo um, last longer, but how to make consumers consume more, right? So uh, maybe they have like really good technology, but um, it's meant to be outdated in five years so that one way or another one, you need to change your phone 
whether if it's still in good conditions or not. But those phones are never going to be repurposed, are never going to be recycled, and they are never going to be uh, remanufactured. They're just going to be thrown away or passed um, to another generation, right? So sometimes people buy a new phone and give their old phone to their parents, but now their parents have another phone that they will have to give to someone else or just keep um, on a shelf and no one is going to use it again. And that phone is a waste of material and it's a waste of, um, it, it's a source of contamination just because we have it in our shelf and we have it there. Um, stuck in there, it doesn't mean that it's not generating pollution because eventually, if you don't give a use to that, you will end up throwing away. What you're just doing is prolonging the time about when that is going to end in a trash bin. Next slide, please. Um, so, um, just to close this up, what we need to think about also when we are proposing new research topics is about how many SDGs am I targeting? If we go to the next slide, we all know that there's like 17 of them, that each of them have different indicators that we need to follow, and that each of them can um, be mixed one with the other one, right? It's not one project is most likely never going to be focused only on one of the SDGs. There's always a way to be using at least three or four of them. Next one, please. So that also um, right now with all your projects and all your uh, the ideas that you're building um, and we already ask ourselves like um, how sustainable my project is, how many SDGs am I targeting? Now we can also ask ourselves how many more can I target? How many connections can I do so that my research reach other people? Um, how many more institutions, government, public, private, etc. cetera, can I involve so that my um, information gets farther away or also my product is used in different fields that I know that it, it can still generate like a meaningful impact in the next slide please and this is mainly about thinking about the box out of the box um, I know that by now you might be thinking like well I'm, I have already done this that's why we're talking about sustainability but there's always um, the need of reviewing your objectives and your plans and your methodology every single year to understand whether your uh, planning right now is adjusting to the environmental needs right now and the environmental trends, if you will call it like that now, or if you're still thinking about what was going on five years ago, for example. So we always need to keep reviewing our plans. The next one, please. That's why if we pay attention to what's going to happen in the presentation in the next three slides, that's always going to send us back to a, cir to a circle basis, going back to bioeconomy, going back to how much of uh, biomaterials can I involve in my, um, in my projects. Um, how much of this can I repurpose? If we go to the next slide, please. It's throwing arrows back down in your production um, lane. So basically is rethinking every single step of your production process, of your planning process, of your even leading process, uh, how much of whatever it is that we're producing or using are we thinking since they want to repurpose that at one in one point on in the way. Right. Maybe it's not right now, maybe it's going to be in a year, maybe it's going to be in two, or maybe it's going to be in a month. But um, this comes to the fact that we really need to sit down and analyze, again, every single step of our um, process so that for each of them, we have an arrow that will go back to the beginning of the process. It might sound challenging, it might sound like a lot of effort or maybe like way more investment to be involved in this, but actually it's not. Uh, what might take a little time is, is the process of planning this and is the process of understanding how to make this um, a circular flow chart. But once it's done, um, the, the amount of savings that a manufacturing company or just like a research team can have of this can be up to 35% um, of their initial budget. Just because now technology does not allow us to do a 100% circular uh, production 
process. But once that we get there, maybe in five to 10 years, we can say that um, we will have like 50% of investment and 50% of saves in return of everything that we have re been repurposing in our process. There's a couple of more slides, but I think that we can end it here if we have to, to finish now. Um, because again, we're just like going back to the same topic. And then I know that um, a lot of questions might be like, okay, this doesn't seem like pretty usable for space, for example, or maybe um, we cannot use biomaterials in machine learning and stuff like that. But the thing is that right now what we need is more and more and more iteration on the Internet of Things. But, um, artificial intelligence and the different like modules that logarithm can give to us really help us understand how these new materials going to behave, where the material is going to be used. And also when you think about a big process of manufacturing, um, if you have a, a model of that, an AI model of that, and then you can identify how much waste is generated in each step of the process that you maybe have never quantified, then you can also uh, think about better ways about way, where to repurpose that. So there's definitely a focus of deep, of deep tech in the um, advance of biotech, um, I mean, bioeconomy and circular economy, but there's also the need of thinking of all of these processes since the very beginning from a circular economy and bioeconomy point of view. Um, I hope that 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 gave you maybe like a brief introduction to these new topics and that you can go and um, do your own um, research and thinking about how much of your researches, companies, projects, and every single thing that you may do in your life, right, like day-to-day -day activities, adapt to this new model of production and how much more can you do to change that. Thank you.